While I was sleeping today, I had a sermon I wanted to preach, but the Lord said, speak to the leaders and the pastors. He said, speak to the leaders and the pastors. So I'm going to just share with us something apostolic for the leaders and the pastors. Even as we learn, we write, we grow together. Amen. Let's recalibrate. Is that okay? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those that are okay, just assist them. The Holy Spirit has done a quick work. Just assist them so that they could be part of the sermon. But anyone that you try to lift up and the Holy Ghost is still um, touching that person, let's leave God to do what he wants to do. Amen. A little bit louder. Thank you. The wise master builder. The wise master builder. The wise master builder. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation on another built it thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. Colossians 4 verse 17. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, and thou fulfill it. The fulfillment of your ministry does not come from God. The fulfillment of your ministry comes from you. So God can give you a mighty ministry, a mighty assignment, a mighty destiny, and you are the one that will determine the size of that ministry. God does not determine the impact of our ministry. We determine the impact of that ministry. God will bless us with the ministry. But he is the initiator of the ministry. But we are the producers of that ministry. And if you decide that you don't want to do anything with the gift and the callings that God has given to you, it is not going to stop God from being God, but it will limit you from enjoying the fullness of the life that God has ordained for you. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. He said, say to Archippus, take heed, take heed to the ministry which thou has received. You cannot initiate ministry. Ministry is received. Everyone seated under the sound of my voice, you are in a ministry. Ministry is not just for pastors. You are in a ministry. You are in a music ministry. You are in marketplace ministry. You are in pastoral ministry. Or you are in leadership ministry. Every dimension that God has given to you should bring glory back to the kingdom of God. That is what ministry is all about. Service to the king and to his kingdom. That's what ministry is all about. So whether you are called into the business field or you are called into education or you are called to the pulpit, you are in ministry. You are in ministry. And he says that thou fulfill it. So the fulfillment of ministry is dependent on you. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Psalm 78 verse 72. Psalm 78 72. I'll be very fast because of time. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them according to the skillfulness of his hands. Two things are very important there in that scripture. The skill and the heart must go together. If the heart does not have integrity in it, 
you will limit the fullness of that ministry. And if the heart has integrity, but the hands are not skillful enough, you will also still limit the fulfillment of that ministry. It takes skill to operate with God. A lot of people don't know this, but it takes skill to operate according to the workings of God in territorial places. It takes skill. When you enter into your territory, no two territories are the same. Jesus walked into Capernaum and yet he could not do mighty works. But he went to another territory. All he needed was to encounter a man that had a legion of demons and he left the territory. And that man preached to Decapolis, to entire ten cities and Jesus captured it. When Jesus walked into another territory, he went straight to the well because he was waiting for a woman that will come. Every territory of field is skill and it takes spiritual insight. I used to always think that wisdom will produce wealth until I read in the Bible where it says that there was a poor wise man. And the Lord said to me, there are dimensions of wisdom. There is a dimension of wisdom called divine direction. There is a dimension of wisdom called divine strategies. That one will never make you poor. But other dimensions of wisdom in revelation of the word of God, interpretation of that, you might still have that and you might not have divine direction concerning some certain things in life. I refuse to be spiritually ignorant. You see, you can be educated and be ignorant in the spirits. I refuse to be spiritually ignorant. So that when I walk into an environment, I can sense things, capture realities of the spirit. And tonight, God is going to give you the seeing eye and the hearing ear. If you believe it, please let your amen be louder. Amen. So, I will not do a lot of introduction because of time, so I'll go straight, straight, straight to keys that will help you to fulfill your ministry. What makes a wise master builder? Requirements to become a wise master builder in your church, in your business, in your enterprise. Number one, you must have an assignment. An assignment. You can't send yourself you are sent. If you send yourself, you have to sustain yourself. But if he sends you, he will sustain you. So you could be called to the educational ministry. And the moment you start it, because you are sent, resources will be brought your way because you are sent. Elijah, Go to the brook. I have commanded a raven to feed you there. The moment the brook dried up, he had to wait for the next instruction. Go to Zarephath, for I have commanded a widow to feed you there. When you go where you are sent, you will always find resources. So lack is a signpost. <laughs> That will either tell you whether you are in disobedience or obedience. God is not permitted to finance your own mission. He only will finance and provide for his own mission. Ah, yeah. Someone says, ah, Pastor, how do I know my assignment? I am not Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is not T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes is not Joel Austin. Their assignments are different. If you don't know your assignment, you will copy somebody else's. And you will be intimidated by somebody else's. I don't need to be a big you. I just need to be a big me.
I don't need to sing like you or sound like you. If I stop being me and start being you, who will stop being them to become me? So the Bible says, he that compares himself with another is not wise. You must recognize your assignments. If you're ever going to make a great impact, nobody makes global impact by accident. Global impact is intentional. You must fulfill your ministry. You must know who you are and be very confident about who you are. If you are a soft talker, it doesn't matter. Let me tell you that drops of water can bring down an entire mountain. It doesn't matter how the water is dropping. If it consistently drops that way, that mountain is going to crack. Don't change who you are to become someone else and think that the personality that you're working in is different from what God has ordained you to become. Because you see, if you stand with who you are, you will make a move. A lot of people are too intimidated. When we see gifted people, there is a tendency for gifted people to change our perception. Then we want to adjust who we are to fit into who gifted people are. But you see, you are unique in your personality. Two identical twins are not really identical in the realm of the spirit. They can be called to two different assignments. So you must understand that your church has a different blueprint from another person's church. Stop merging ministry together. Stand sure upon the calling that Christ has called you to fulfill. I will share from my own experience. I'm from House on the Rock. My father is Pastor Paul Adeoluade for us. And House on the Rock has a method. They have a style. So when I entered House on the Rock, I just copied the style. And Open your Bibles to the book of uh, God is about to change somebody's life today. If you hear me now, somebody say, oh yeah. <laughs> Pastor Tim, I did that consistently for five years. But something was missing. I felt out of the box. I said, what if I'm not like this? Would they not kick me out of house on the rock? And I said, God, let me be original. The moment I was original, Pastor Paul's spirit connected with me. In my originality, he consistently invited me to rock cathedral to preach. And some pastors would tell me, what are you doing? How much are you sowing a seed? I said, it's not seed. He has captured my spirit and he has found out that this one is original. So I don't go there and try to be like him. I can't even. Have you ever heard his English? Sometimes he's preaching, you'll be checking dictionary. And he's not doing it to impress anybody. That is who he is. It's just flowing from his spirit. You interview him in English. You ask him questions in English. He's just bombarding you. Wisdom personified. Hold on to your originality. It is special. Somebody say loud amen. Number two. Number two. Contending for higher expression of the anointing. <laughs> you must contend for higher expression of the anointing. Someone says, ah, pastor, I'm an educationist. What do I need the anointing for? You need it. The only thing demons respond to is the anointing. There are certain things education can't shift. Aish. There are certain things language cannot shift. Look at my language. I did not say contend for a higher uh, level of the anointing. No. Higher expression. Because the moment you are given the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost in you is not a half Holy Ghost. One quarter Holy Ghost. No. 
The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside. The difference is the expression, your ability to believe that he dwells on the inside of you and you're willing to release him to have an expression. Listen, the release of the Holy Ghost sometimes is not dramatic. Like some people might think, that, ah, I'm, I'm ministering now. The Holy Ghost was moving and deliverance was taking place. When Pastor Tim was preaching, the same effect. It's just that one might be looking dramatic, the other might not be looking dramatic, but it's the same Holy Ghost. The same effect. While he was preaching, I could feel the fire of God all over my body. Because that's how my own expression of the anointing is. It doesn't matter that things were not happening in the meeting. Listen, you could be talking as a lecturer and students will be getting saved. You must be confident of what you have. Not, when Peter walked up to that man, he said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, I am willing to give it to you. He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The man did not walk. Peter said, you, you joke with my grace? How can I tell you walk? You will not walk. Come on, get up. The anointing, when you are sure of it, it never fails. <laughs> you must contend for higher expression of the anointing. Your church is still 10 members. Ah, there are some things you just have to put Satan to a clown. The Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. The Lord just said to me right now that chains are breaking. As I just said that, the Lord just said to me that chains are breaking. Chains. Chains are breaking. Somebody's leg is about to catch fire legs about to catch fire I, I i see like fire on someone's legs and certain chains that has stopped you from moving and entering into the next level of your life is about to break right now father by the power of the holy ghost let those chains be removed right now in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ That chain is broken. You have free access to enter the promises of God. You must contend for higher expression of the anointing. The anointing does not need gra gra. You can be a soft person. Please, Pastor Tim, what is gra gra? How do I explain gra gra? Forcefulness. The anointing does not need to be temperamental. Just calm and get it to flow. Soft it to flow. He, one person I used to look at was then was Enoch Adeboye. He would say, about 10 people right now, <laughs> the Lord is saying to me, after today's meeting, your life will never remain the same. Somebody shout Hallelujah. The biggest ministry in the world is led by a man that cannot preach. The anointing. When you are anointed, you know the word anointing is gotten from the word to smear with oil. It makes life so easy. You flow through realities with ease. What people will struggle to get. You want to get a piece of land. Oh, the Lord just said to me, landed properties are being released. <laughs> Lift up your hands, everyone, right now. Patako supe ele banda ba. Epoto sule fregedinda bo shata. Lento kosule fregedinda ba. After Activate Conference, some certain dimensions of landed properties are going to be released over this church in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, I feel 
feel it so strongly in my spirit. Rise up and receive it. Rise up. Father, in the name of Jesus. We release landed properties. Landed properties. Landed properties. Landed properties. Real estate. Some of those properties will have buildings on them. Hey! 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 Some of those properties will have buildings on them. Said the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Be seated. While people are struggling to get properties, you get them with ease. The anointing opens doors. Woo. The anointing opens doors. The Bible says he anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. What is the relationship between a head and a cup? A head is a living thing. A cup is an inanimate object. It's not alive. But God is saying that non-living things respond to the anointing upon your life. You walk into a territory and a territory opens on its own accord. It just opens. I walked into the hotel. We immediately entered Dusaka. They opened the door. A lady led me in and she was showing me some certain things. And I walked into the hotel. And the moment I just kept my bag, I was about to relax. An angel was just standing beside my, my bed. And he did like this. The moment I knew, I knew the heavens over Lusaka has opened. He saluted me like a general. Like, welcome to the city. And I believed it was the angel of this ministry. Permitting me to minister. Saluting my presence. Saying, you have come. Listen, there was a time I couldn't see those dimensions. My eyes were closed. Like a blind man. How will I be preaching? Pastor, how will you be preaching? Satan will be saying, preach, pastor. <laughs> Satan. Nothing is happening to him. Finish and comes and tell you powerful word and goes home. Satan. Because there are certain people that enter into your space and they can limit the entire activity of the space. Jonah said, Guys, throw me out. That's your pro I'm, I'm your problem. Come ten. Say, Father, I receive the grace to express a higher dimension of your anointing in the name of Jesus. So you have a gifted voice. Yet nobody moves. You can do all the riffs and runs. Yet Satan is not running. But there are certain people. They don't have to sing so much. Their songs will become global. <sighs> what makes a song anointed is the anointing upon the life of the man that is singing it. Say I receive. Higher grace, Higher grace to express, to express your anointing to in a higher dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. One day, we're having Children's Day. And I told all the children to come and I decided to be with the children. I wanted the service to be excellent. So I was with the kids teaching them. We're doing, we're enjoying ourselves. Then one mother came and she said, Pastor, my daughter can't come. I said, what's the problem? She said, she's not feeling fine. There's fever all over her. And I said, hey, what's wrong with that? I said, heal her. My mother looked at me and said, what? I said, go and heal her. I said, bring her for the rehearsal. The mother said, she's weak. She's sick on the bed. So I said, go and bring the girl. So the girl brought the girl. They were rehearsing on the stage. I said, put her on this chair. She put her. And I said, now, 
Put your head on your daughter's head. Put your head there. She looked at her. I said, look at your daughter eyeball to eyeball and command that fever to go out now. I said, do you love your daughter? I said, you like her sick? She said, no. I said, command. <laughs> then she commanded. Then the girl stood up, ran outside the church and went to throw up. When she came back, new energy. The mother started to cry. I said, you had it in you. It has been in you. The Holy Ghost has been in you. It's just that when you see fever, you drop your anointing and you pick drugs. I told her, you had it in you. It's not me. It's you. You were the one that, that prayed for your daughter. And she told me, she said, ever since that day, if her daughter is sick, the daughter will just run. If she feels anything, say, mommy, lay your hands on me. Lay your head on me. Then the mother will just put the head and that's be the end. The daughter now believes that her mother's head. <laughs> it got so bad, she started inviting people from her school that if her mother's head should touch them, they will all be healed. The daughter experienced it from the mother. But that expression is in every parent that is here. Pastor was telling us, he spoke into his daughter's ear. Ah, I just told myself immediately after that, I'm going to program all my children. Ah. <laughs> ah, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. Programming. <laughs> Pastor, we wake up, we set the alarm. We program it. If we can't program it, we record it in our phone. And play it in their room. Let it be playing for them. Expressions of the anointing. Say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Number three. Number three. Organization. Organization. I'm rushing because of time, but I know that most of us are getting it. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Organization. A strong leadership and organizational structure will always produce more. A strong leadership and organizational structure will always produce more. Pastor, they met Jesus and they told him we have only two loaves and five fishes. He said, let the men sit down. And the Bible said, he said, let them sit down in 50s. The moment you begin to organize your ministry and your assignment and your purpose, you are producing more for yourself. This organization reduces. Organization increases. Order creates more for you. It's like when you are traveling and you have a traveling bag and you just pack all your clothes inside that box. You'll find out that the space in the box will be consumed. But the moment you fold everything neatly, you'll find out that the box that looks small, more will come. The moment you organize your life, you're creating more capacity capacity for God to fill in things in you. Disorganized pastors cannot have a growing church. If you can't organize your day, you can't organize your week. If you can't organize your week, you can't organize your month. If you can't organize your month, you can't organize a year. Two days to cross over. That's when you start planning for crossover. Ah, bah. This is one of the major reasons why people fail. You are a young man. You are not organized. You don't know what you're going to do. Anybody that calls you for invitation, you follow. You don't have a direction for your life. You must learn to put your life in order. God did not create the bed. Then say, where is the ground? We'll put it. Or where is the sky to fly in? He did not create the goat and say, where is the grass he will eat? God was exceptionally structured. He made sure the sun was in place, the grass will be in place, then the goat will be in place, then the lion that will eat the goat, the goat that will eat the grass, the sun that will light the Everything was arranged in order. Then finally, his epitome creation, he created man. The finest of his expression. If God was that organized, he was so organized, he said, the Bible says he divided the waters from the land. 
When your ministry is scattered and people are not deployed, you will have a lot of rebellion. Because human beings love to be deployed. You just have 16 leaders. Five of them are doing nothing. I have 16 leaders. What's this leader's job? He's a leader. <laughs> you started a team. You started a prayer meeting. The prayer meeting, not organized. Everybody just come. Let's just blast in tongues. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. <laughs> I give you seven months. Someone will see people dying. <laughs> there was there, I <laughs> someone just got it. Because it's not organized. I met a music group. They said, Pastor, we want to submit to you. I said, okay. There were plenty. I said, oh, wow, wow. This is a very powerful meeting. I said, who is your leader? We don't have leader. The Holy Ghost is our leader. <laughs> ah. I said, really? He said, yes. That we decided that we will not have leader. We will just be switching things around. <laughs> I said, I've known God for a long time. He doesn't operate like this. This ministry is dead. It will die. And it died. When you don't have structure, look at your body. Your nose is not on your head. Because when rain falls, you will drown. God organized you very well and arranged you accurately so that we don't walk with our hands, we walk with our legs. So if the hands you say, I want to be leg. That's what the Bible says in Corinthians. The whole body will be disorganized. When, you are, when your business is not structured, you can't produce more. Listen, Listen, I learned this from Kenneth Hagin. He said, if your ministry or your business is producing $1 million, you want to produce $2 million, go back into the ministry, reorganize it. Automatically, increase will take place. He said, you're beginning to produce $2 million. Go back into your ministry, reorganize it. You are spending some things on irrelevant things. Listen to me, extravagance is not excellence. Go back, you'll find out that there are some certain things you are doing. If you sit down and reorganize, like he said, you have a container and you don't have options, but you are still sticking to your container. This thing must work the way I said it to work. There are some things you can change to reorganize your ministry. Just because you've been doing it for 10 years, that doesn't mean you should continue to do it in the 11th year. If it is not working, change it. Reorganize yourself. An organization, make sure that position is not somebody's inheritance. I am the choir leader now and forever shall be. It's a very great problem we have in ministry because a lot of people feel that position in this kingdom we don't lord over people. We serve, we remove our clothes and tie the towel so that when you tell your associate pastor, um, I don't want you to be the associate pastor again, I want you to go and head the ushers. He's excited. He shouldn't see it as a demotion. He shouldn't see it as a demotion. He should be excited to serve. But here you not tell somebody, you will not sing for this month, we want to remove you. I know you have a gifted voice, but our security um, ministry needs somebody's anointing and we want you to be in the security ministry. The person just... <laughs> I don't, I don't know, Pastor. I don't like this kind of thing. I don't like it. I don't like it. Then you now want to squatter, scatter the choir because you feel that position is inheritance. So from the inception, you must begin to tell people no position in this church, in this job, in this ministry. You say you're my secretary today, but you can be in charge of the field tomorrow. 
so that you don't keep positions and in, as inheritance. You can easily restructure the ministry. Things can move. That's what Satan was doing in heaven. I will ascend. He has been promoted. He was looking for more. So God sent him down. Somebody being blessed. You must recognize that ministry must run like an organization. Your school must run like an organization. Listen, your life must run like an organization. You are the CEO of your life. If you're ever going to become a person of impact, you must run your life like an organization. You must. Your gift, your talent, your resources, your bank account, you must give an account. The Bible says he came back and said, give an account of the gift that I have given you. One said, I buried it. And God still judged him. He said, you are a wicked, wicked. Anyone that does not organize his life is wicked. What have you done with it? Have you produced more? One said, you gave me five. I've produced five more. Good and faithful. See it that way, man that is faithful in little. What happens? God will give him more. You must run your life. You must organize your life. Take, your, take every assignment you are giving seriously. Listen, sir. You can be a global keyboardist or a Lusaka keyboardist. It has nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with God. That ministry, you will fulfill it. And we decree and declare that your mind is open for global impact. I made up my mind. I will not die in me now. Sir, I go for pastor's meeting. Eh? Intentionally to know what I don't want to look like. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have to say this. I'll go for the meeting and be like, wow. God forbid. <laughs> I won't think like this, God. Have mercy on them. For they know not. And my pastor friend will be like, sometimes he'll be like, why are you here? I said, I'm inspired. <laughs> Pastors chasing envelopes with politicians. God forbid. I want to be like Jesus. That when I tell a politician I'm coming, he's shocked. He's surprised. You mean it? You're coming? He said, don't worry. Come down from that sycamore tree. Today, I'm going to your house. He's surprised. Number one is what? Number one? Number two? Number three? In organization, I would like to touch something that I call training. Training. It's part of organization. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 14, it said that Abraham armed his trained servants. Never arm someone you have not trained. Even if they are coming from another organization, train them with the culture of your own organization. Because they will tell you, this is how we are doing it in that church. Why did you come here? You must train people. House on the Rock is a very different ministry. We have our different styles. We have transition. There's a way you collect the offering. You have to be poised. You must speak your English correctly. You cannot just begin to say, ah, ah, ah. No, we don't pray that way. My father, my father. No, we don't pray that way. We don't pray that way here. So we train people how to pray. The disciples looked at Jesus and they saw that Jesus was praying in a different way. They said, Teach us how to pray. Oh. 
He said, well, Pastor, our prayer does not have fire. It has the anointing. <laughs> and it's working. Relax. This is the way we do it here. This organization, this is the way we do it here. This school, this is the way we do it here. In this school, every teacher must talk in. Talk in. When we come for service, we have professional service. You must wear suits. If you like, let it, let it be hot. <laughs> wear that suit. Training is part of your organization. If you don't have training, you will scatter your ministry, your organization, your business. So when people come into your business, teach them your core values. Teach them your culture. Teach them what you represent. Or else they will bring their own assumptions. An assumption is the mother of heartbreak. A gifted rebel is not an asset. No matter how talented that person is. As long as he's a rebel, it's not an asset, it's a liability. He can destroy your work in one day. Ronaldo felt like he was the one that owned Manchester United. Ferguson sold him. And yet Ferguson was still a success. Now he's back. <laughs> he has humbled himself. But there was a time in, 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 in Manchester because he was a superstar. When Rooney too was feeling like a superstar, Ferguson did what? Sold him. Because a gifted rebel is not an asset. Barcelona waited for years, years. Messi controlled it. Now Messi has left. They are struggling. Sorry for those of you that don't watch football. I apologize. But I hope somebody's being blessed. Number four, right? Your style. Your style. I use the word style, but in the Bible, it's, it talks about grace. Or to Moses, pattern. Your pattern. You must find out your pattern of doing things. And it is in that pattern you teach the people. Your style of doing things. Your style can be different from somebody else's style. The core principles will be the same for success. But the style, the grace. Paul says you are partakers of my grace. God speaking to Moses, he said, build according to pattern. You can't build anyhow. You must build the structure according to pattern. Right? You can't start a branch church with a different pattern from the headquarter church. And say the spirit of God is leading you. That is not the spirit of God. You must align your pattern. There is a style we do things. You can't pick pattern from somewhere else. You will become a bastard to do that. Paul said you might have 10,000 instructors. But hey, in Christ, he could boast about it. He said, I have begotten you. How dare you go to another person and call the person your father? He said, I am your father in Christ. You can't do anything outside. So he said, my sons in Corinthians, I warn you. He said, my beloved Timothy, my son in the faith could boast about Timothy. He said, Titus, my beloved son in the faith. He could boast about Titus. Because they follow a style, a pattern. When you leave your associates and his own style emerge from that day, he goes to reserve seats. Listen, it happens even in company. You give your, your second in command the company to run. Then he starts bringing his own style without your permission, without a conference meeting, without the initiation of this new idea that you are betting. There's something wrong. 
That means he has been waiting. Like, I'll keep this beautiful information. <laughs> I will not allow pastor to be the one that will be in front when it is executed. The day I'm in charge, they shall know. This church will hear it. <laughs> style. Your pattern. Your style. It must be unique. Deeper life is not winners. Winners is not Christ's embassy. Christ's embassy is not Mount Zion. Everybody has his pattern. And every pattern is beautiful. That's why coconut is not apple. Apple is not orange. Orange is not banana. God created fruits. They are all good. But they all have different patterns. You can't force a cucumber to become a banana. No matter how much you like banana. I'm sorry. I apologize. Number five. Number five. I'll use a business term. If you're going to become a global ministry with impact, a wise master builder, your marketing and your reach. You don't assume that ministry will blow. Your organization will grow. You must have marketing and reach. I call it the energy or in our new term, the vibe. What vibe are you giving people outside? That's marketing. You need to give people a vibe of who you are. What's my vibe? What's my vibe? The media department, your job in this church is to let the entire world know your pastor's vibe. He should not beg you to put his videos online and create skits for your pastor. You put that vibe, the same vibe you enjoy of your pastor here on the pulpit. You put that vibe outside. Let the entire Lusaka feel the vibe of your pastor. Let his voice be the only voice when people check media. They are seeing his voice there. Let them feel the energy that this church is feeling. You must market and reach. When the church is sharing things on, on WhatsApp, share it. When you don't share it, the 50 people on your phone don't see it. You are limiting our reach. Jesus said to them, he said, publish it everywhere. Marketing is part of growth. Marketing is part of growth. Jesus will heal people and say, go show yourself to the priest. <laughs> go tell those bloody Pharisees that Messiah is here. <laughs> go show yourself to the priest. The woman immediately finished, sent her back into the village. She said, Come and see a man. Come and see a man. Every member of this church, that should be your testimony when you go out. Come and see a man. Come and see a man that has blessed my life. Come and see a man that has improved my life. Come and see a man. Your marketing and your reach. You must know your demographics. I'm not bothered about people that are 60 years old, 70. I've lost them. Kumui. They've captured that generation. If I capture a few of it, I'm, I'm grateful to God. But from the ages of five, upward to 45, they are my reach. They are my demography. They are my geographical location. They are the generation I want to impact. From children, adults, and those that are far ahead of me in age, a little bit. I'll look at maybe 10, 12 years ahead so that I can impact like Jesus Christ was impacting a generation ahead of him and yet he was still impacting the children. So you must know your demography. That is why those of you in children's church here, you are part of the testimony. You'll be very surprised how many children come to church because children invited other children. And I have parents in church that came to my church because their children said they want to go to House on the Rock. And there was nothing they could do about it. Your ministry, your business, you must reach. You must advertise. In your budget, there has to be advertisement. 
You cannot think that advertisement is a waste of money. It's never a waste of money. People can only choose what they see. If it is not their option, it is not part of their choice. Remember what pastor was saying? That he got to his wardrobe and he only could choose from the clothes that were available. If your business is not available in the wardrobe, nobody will choose it. So you must market. You must market. You must market. Okay? And lastly, I'll end here. Your finances. Your finances. You cannot be a ministry of impact, a ministry that causes change, and a ministry that produces results if you don't know how to organize your finances. A lot of you that miss the financial training, you shouldn't be missing financial trainings. It's very important. Listen, the name of Jesus is heavy. It takes money to lift it up. I'm telling you, ministry is expensive. This rug, this thing you are seeing here, it's not tongues. Shala barabia, rabare, no. <laughs> Businessmen in this church, if you really, really, really want to expound your, your finances to another level, involve kingdom, organize yourself, back up your pastor, stand behind him. Let every project start from you people. Sir, I'll be in church. Year after year, I've never seen Pastor Paul doing offering for experience. You don't stand and say, want to raise money for experience or do you have experience envelope? No, I've not seen it. I say, Father Lord. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh God. Did you flash some of us and call some other people? <laughs> Why? Because the businessmen of that church, they understand their ministerial duties as financial apostles. They don't want their father to ever raise money from the altar. Before he will speak, they will write checks for him and say, Dad, experience covered. Somebody here will cover the expenses of Activate next year. Oh, you didn't believe it. How many of us believe that? If you believe it, shout a loud amen. amen. Today I wanted to talk to ministers and pastors and church. Tomorrow I will share the word in a different dimension. But how many of us were blessed? Father, we thank you for the precious time that we've spent together listening to your word being impacted by your grace. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, let everyone shout a loud amen.